David. Oh, good morning, everyone. And I'd like to welcome to, to this special call. In. And also welcome Peter Sanchez to the Avini Health team. Uh, wow. And, and yet you're uh, pretty familiar with, with these type of products. And I'd like to uh, have Chip, my friend, uh, who I guess you met him many years ago. I just kind of talk about how you got reacquainted. And I think we have a little bit of destiny happening here. And just wanted to share that with everyone. So take it away, Chip. Well, no doubt there's some divine guidance involved and, and it's great to be back in touch uh, with my buddy, Peter Sanchez. I, I want everybody to know though, this, this is absolutely real, raw, authentic, brand, brand new because the man who is the connector between Peter and I uh, was a friend of mine in special forces and he had a heart that would quit on him. He got medevaced in a chopper off a ski slope one time. And uh, one day he went into the VA and didn't feel just right, went into the bathroom and never came out. And so that connection was lost. So when Peter says that it's been, you know, 25 or 30 years between uh, he and I talking, it has literally been that long. So there isn't some long, long history of he and I uh, doing Rick's Zeolite together that is, is just getting rekindled in Avini. This is, this is brand, brand new stuff. And Peter, I'd, I'd really uh, like to introduce you, uh, but maybe even better because you were there at the beginning of this and I wasn't. Uh, you and your wife are watching a TV program. How'd this whole thing start uh, a week ago? <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting how it happened. Uh, my wife and I were, were watching a program she likes to watch. It's called HGTV. And Chip and Joanna Gaines, you know, run the, the program. And it made me think of Chip and Marcy Littlejohn. And I went to Google and put Chip Littlejohn and your phone number came up. And I called you and we spoke for a long time and I asked you how you were doing. And you started telling me about Avini. And I got so darn excited about what you were saying and what you said to me. And I ordered the products next day or the next day. But uh, I, that night before I, before I signed up the following day, uh, I went on YouTube and so I watched about, we watched about two hours worth of videos, me and my wife, about the company. And I got pretty well educated about what was going on. And I was so excited. Like I said, the next day I ordered the products, the next day here. And we've been taking them now for seven days. And the, the things that have happened to us uh, in the last seven days are incredible for both of us because my wife is a type uh, one diabetic. She has been since she was six years old and her blood, her blood sugars varied from 50 to 350 in those, in all those years. And in the seven days that we've been taking the products, her blood sugar has been stable right around hundred at 24 hours a day. And that's never happened to her, never, ever. So obviously she's pretty, pretty happy about that. Uh, myself, I, I've had prostate problems for 20 years. And prior to taking the products, I would get up uh, in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom seven or eight times a night. And in the seven days I've been taking the products, I've only been getting up about two or three times a night. I think last night I only got up twice, Chip. So that's pretty exciting what's happening. Hey, You're setting oh, personal record. Could, could, you, could you go back again? How old was your wife when she first started having blood sugar problems? Six years old. Wow. It was six years old when she, when she yeah. And uh, she's had a lot of problems since then. As a matter of fact, uh, in the last 10 months, she hasn't been able to walk because she, we had a house in Arizona and she got an infection on her toe and it turned into gangrene and they were talking about amputating her foot. And uh, she's gone through seven surgeries on her leg because of the low uh, circulation problems and two surgeries on her, on her heel. One of, the, one of the doctors did a surgery on her heel and it took 10 months to heal. As a matter of fact, she's walking now for the first time with her walker. She's had to sit on it for, for 10 months and now she can walk. So we saw the doctor yesterday and the doctor told her that in about a week, she, was, she could be able to start walking on her own. So really good news for us. You know, um, I, I don't wanna steal Dave's thunder because uh, Dave just came up with a, a new term and, and we're gonna wind up talking a lot about um, these uh, sugar problems now going forward. But uh, while we were warming up, Dave had inspiration, and I, 
I'd steal it if I, it just wouldn't be fair. <laughs> oh, hey, it, it's not that big a thing, but we're, we're talking about fiber that this this new product, how just miracles are happening. And and we, we had Rich Cotter and Barb Ostrom do a wonderful call. I highly recommend you listen. It's recorded on SoundCloud, uh, but there's all of these uh, miracles that are happening in such a short time when people get on the plus fiber. And, and I just got thinking, uh, Wow, uh, the, the, the sugar stuff that everybody's playing with, perhaps it's just a, a, a plus fiber deficiency uh, disorder. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. I think that's a great term. And you think about, um, you know, how big the fiber department is in a grocery store or a pharmacy. Why hasn't that happened before? Why is complications due to plus fiber deficiency syndrome, still one of the top killers in the world. And then what's the top one? Heart disease, what is that? It is also a complication due to sugar problems. And so I, I believe, you know, what Peter, and Peter has become the lightning rod, kind of like uh, Darren was with the plus relief, really Peter's wife, diabetic, type one, six years old, you're a little girl. And she's gone her whole life like that. And her husband watching a, you know, home improvement show gets an inspiration. Where'd that inspiration come at, from, do you figure, Peter? It came from God. It had to be. <laughs> but I mean, I, I was, I, I mean, I, 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 I had really been thinking about you guys before that. It's kind of funny. I don't know why. But I was thinking, I wonder what Chip and Marcy Littlejohn are doing. I haven't talked to them in a long time. And uh, I was always impressed by you guys, both of you, because uh, you're, you're so successful at what you do. And uh, I want to ask a couple of details about, about your life, Peter. And, and I don't want to start at the very beginning yet. I'm going to jump into the middle because I, it's, uh, you know, whenever we're, you know, reconnecting with somebody or we're meeting someone, in, in a way, we're interviewing people to see if we would like to do a beanie with them. And it's conceivable that somebody would have reached out to me from those days and, and I wouldn't have told them. Well, that would not be a good sign about your character, but uh, obviously Peter's on the opposite end of that spectrum and I would like to work with Peter Sanchez. So why are some of those things, now you started out studying journalism. Say, say something about that and then what you did with it. Yeah, I went to school at the University of Washington. I actually started my junior year, I had already, gone to two years of community college in at Phoenix, Arizona and Tacoma, Washington. And so I, I, uh, I always liked broadcasting. I, I was a baseball player. I was a pretty good baseball player. Matter of fact, I had a scholarship to, to baseball in high school and I was in a car accident when I graduated from high school and I ended up in crippled children's hospital for three months, uh, paralyzed from the waist down. The doctors told my mother I'd never walk again. These were orthopedic doctors, by the way. Little did I know that I'd be in orthopedics for 30, 35 years later on in my life. But, and not only did I walk again, but I walked onto the baseball team at the University of Washington and made the team. Uh, I, I, I was able to throw left-handed and right-handed, which not a lot of people can do. So they called me Ambi for ambidextrous. <laughs> and uh, anyway, uh, I, I, I studied broadcast journalism. I actually broadcast at the University of Washington Husky football and basketball games on radio for two years. And then from there, I went to work for the Seattle Supersonics. Bill Russell was my boss. And that was in 1973, 74. And then from there, I went to work at a CBS television station in Seattle as a news reporter. And I knew I didn't want to do that because the, the, the higher, the, higher the, neg the news reporting is so negative. The more negative they are, the higher your ratings are that you get. And so I moved to Los Angeles, California in 1977 to pursue my broadcasting career. And I kind of stumbled into the orthopedic business, uh, got a company car, making good money. And I did that for 35 years. I mean, that was my career pretty much. So that's my story. I, I wanted to dig into that just a little bit because that was a huge decision. And in, in a way, when we're you know talking to people about Avini, we're, we're asking them for two things. Number one, would you like to rescue yourself? Um, because we think that we have solutions to problems that there haven't been solutions to before. 
You know, you think about what your wife went through with that cactus poking her in the foot for 10 months and all those operations. That's an overnight deal here. You know, that, that, that little bottle that I sent you yesterday, uh, that handles that overnight. Um, you know, and, and the thing that just happened to her um, with the plus fiber, I can't believe it was that quick, but we're literally in product discovery for plus fiber right now this week. I mean, you, you actually overnighted your shipment. And because of that, you had a Vini's brand new fiber product before I did. You got yours a day before I got mine. And yeah. so, so you're literally the, 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 you know, you jumped into the lead of this thing right off the bat. But the other thing we're asking people is not just to rescue themselves. You know, people maybe do seven careers in a lifetime. And, and these are gigantic questions that we're asking because I'm asking you to, you know, have a new career. I'm asking you to consider something different. What was it about the orthopedics? Was it just the, the new car and the money that made you go? Or was there something about that? that why orthopedics? Why did you change from broadcasting to orthopedics? The freedom of being my own boss, Chip. Because, I mean, I, I, I had, I, I, I mean, I'm not kidding you. I probably had 10 or 15 jobs before I even went to college after I graduated from high school and got out of the army. But uh, I always knew that working for somebody else wasn't where it was at. I always knew that, uh, I mean, I started working when I was eight years old, shining shoes and washing windows and delivering newspapers. And I remember one, one, one year I was 12 years old, it was Christmas Eve, and I made $240 in one day, shining shoes, washing windows and delivering newspapers. And I, can, and I bought me a brand new top of the line swim bicycle. I remember it cost me $35. And they put a basket on it for my shoe, my shoe shine box and my window washing paraphernalia. And I came home with $200 and handed it to my mom. And she couldn't believe that I made that kind of money in one day. So I was kind of an entrepreneur at 12 years old. I mean, I'm so. loving this conversation. And you're telling me stuff I didn't know. I mean, yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is, Brent, you know, we think we know each other, but you start doing something like this together and you really get to know each other. And and part of the reason is, um, you know, it's not just frivolous light. How's the weather? What happened to you? How's your, you know, last 35 years been? Um, when you dive into the most serious issues in a person's life and their, their health, their life is literally on the line. And for both you and her, it's, it's like that. You start to know each other. And that's happening live right now on this call. I had no idea you were ambidextrous, didn't know you got creamed in a car wreck, didn't know the fight you had to have to come back from that, literally lost control of your body. There went some freedom. And then, of course, Chip, you know the story of my three brothers, and I told you that story. And well, was... you know, I, I asked the permission from you before we did this call, if, if you would talk a little bit about your family. And you started out with in your in your parents wasn't there six boys and some girls my mom and dad had 13 kids all together and i was the next to the youngest out of the 13 kids tell 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 that story well when i was six years old may the 6th 1952 i'll never forget that day me and three brothers of mine two that were older and one that was younger and three neighbors seven of us all together uh, got into this sewer ditch cave and it was about three feet wide and 12 feet deep. The workers left it uncovered and we got in there and started playing. And uh, uh, I was all the way at the bottom of the trench, 12 feet deep and about three feet wide. And I heard this voice, it had to be God, told me to run. And I ran up the embankment and it caved in and it caught me in my neck. I got covered up with dirt up to my neck and my three brothers died right in front of me and one other neighbor died. So they pulled three of us out alive. But can you imagine what my, my mother went through? And my mother also had three sons that were a lot older than I was that died in World War II before they passed the law that if one son has to go to war, no other sons have to go. So my mother was a very strong lady, very, very strong lady. Well, what a story your life has been. And, and I... I loved your answer a little bit ago about, about why orthopedics, and now it ties into each of these things. Um, when you're in that dirt up to your neck, I mean, you could have 
failed to breathe there. How did they get you out? I had a neighbor neighbor that came over there because my sister, I had a sister that was a couple of years old and she was the first one on the scene. And she stood there and panicked for quite a while. And she screamed and one of the neighbors heard her. And he came over and he moved the dirt away from 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 my throat. So he probably saved my life. But even down to your chest to be able to draw any kind of a breath. Yeah, I always wonder, Chip, you know, why God saved me and <laughs> took my brothers. It makes me sad, but yeah. Yeah. I wonder how my life would have been with my brothers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I bet. Well, I, you know, on the lighter side of freedom, when you got that first little bit of money from your newspaper route and window washing and, and shoe shining, you went and got a bicycle. To me, what what what's to me, what is a bicycle? A bicycle is freedom, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Bicycle's freedom. Getting out of that ditch, that's freedom. Yeah. You know, I I really think uh, I love that answer from you because probably every one of us here craves freedom, uh, maybe more than other people do. You think, why do people get involved in something like a beanie? Well, it could be the science, it could be the health things, but you know, if you actually start doing the business, it's got to have something to do with freedom, I think. Because we're just freedom craving creatures that uh, you know, love to be able to, to do it in our own way. That's crazy stuff. Well, um, yesterday, you went and had a, an appointment with, to have her foot checked out again. And one, one thing interesting to me about you, and I, I'd like to ask you about this a little bit. If you're going up and down the you know, Seattle corridor there and striking up conversations with people that need orthopedic um, stuff, you're doing a lot of doc talk. How, how do you have the courage to start those conversations, to walk in an office? And what, what, is, what, what was that like? Well, for, when I first started the business, I was pretty intimidated by just the word orthopedic surgeon and uh, to deal with them because they're pretty sophisticated, pretty much. And they, of course, they make a lot of money and they're, they're uh, I think that I think they have big egos. <laughs> but uh, uh, as I learned about the business, I remember my first experience in orthopedics was kind of a traumatic one. Because I also I sold halos. I don't know if you know what a halo is. You, you they're, they're they're put on for a broken neck, and they have a ring around your head, and they have pins in your skull, and a superstructure and a vest. And most of the most of the accidents that were caused by broken necks were by motorcycle people that didn't wear a helmet, and they had an accident. And a lot of the people didn't make it, of course, because you break a neck. That's pretty pretty traumatic. But I remember the first halo that we put on in San Francisco, California. And I was there for training and uh, the doctor put the, put the halo on the patient and the patient looked in the mirror and grabbed, it, grabbed the, the, the ring around his neck and pulled it down and died right in front of us. That was my first experience. <laughs> so it kind of made me think if I wanted to be in that business or not, because it kind of made me sick. You know? So that was my first, experience, my first real experience with, the, with, with hospitals. But I, I did quite a few surgeries with the hospitals, with the doctors in the hospitals where they did total knees and total hips. They weren't, they weren't doing total shoulders then, but they were doing total knees and total hip replacements. And, and I remember one time uh, I watched the doctor take a, take a hip out of a patient. All he did was he slit the side of the hip out, pulled out the hip, chopped it up with a saw, took the new hip, pounded it into the hole in the bone, sewed it back up, and I said, doctor, you're nothing but a glorified carpenter. <laughs> and he agreed with me. He laughed. He said, yeah, you're right. <laughs> so somehow you overcame that intimidation and got to the point that you did talk to him and you could talk to him. I mean, yeah. all of us are kind of in that world. I mean, we're, we're intimidated a little bit even by each other. And we need to be able to start conversations like that. Can you see what I'm, I'm asking you for? I'm asking, where did your courage come from? How, how did you become bold? And be able to do that. I think I just learned it, Chip. I think I just learned it. Can you hit, give us a hint? <laughs> just kept doing it, I suppose. I just kept doing it. Yeah. I mean, uh, I didn't know if I wanted to be doing that when I first started, but I kept doing it. It took courage on my part, I guess you could say. But uh, I mean, the money was good for one thing. So the money motivated me. I mean, I was making 
forty-five thousand dollars a year in nineteen seventy-seven with a company car. So that was pretty pretty good money back then. And uh, you know, uh, another thing you don't know about me was that I made good money, but I blew it. <laughs> I spent a lot of money. I was a gambling fool. I mean, I lived in Los Angeles for five years, and I don't know if I told you this story, but they had a twenty-eight special where you could fly to Vegas for 28 minutes and $28. And uh, I'd sell more orthopedics than everybody had by six o'clock in the morning. And by noon, I'd be at Los Angeles airport and I'd fly to Vegas and gamble, play blackjack was my game. Uh, I'd play blackjack and I'd be back home before my wife got off work. <laughs> but but I, gotta, I gotta go into that story and ask about those uh, orthopedic sales before six in the morning. Well, yeah. how was that? How was that happening? The doctors start their surgeries early in the morning, and they start at six o'clock in the morning. And I would go into the surgeries and talk to the doctors. They'd, there'd, there'd be a waiting room in the OR, the operating room, and you go in there and talk to the doctors and sell them on what you're doing, what you're doing. Yeah. So you learned that the the time to talk to them was in that early, early morning hour, mm -hmm. and you showed up. Exactly. They had they're out, they were in there drinking coffee. They were relaxing and talking to each other. I'd go in there and mingle with them. I made good friends with a lot of orth orthopedic surgeons. So yeah. Mingled with them. So you, just, <laughs> you know, and and that's kind of that's kind of what we do. I'm 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 really looking for I'm looking for how do I work with you going forward as part of what I'm asking here. And it's happening live right here on this call. Yeah. But that deal where you went in and you mingled with them. Well, yeah. what what do we all do? We, we get in and mingle with people and, and we we are um, we are a carrier of something really, really important. You know, I I was thinking yesterday I, I posted a little picture of uh, uh, people walking into a sticker patch and, and and we've got we've got boots to sell for the people walking into the sticker patch. It's that's pretty much what we've got. But but. Uh, I think folks are used to the problems that we're able to deal with in Avini and, and think they're unsolvable problems. We really do have um, inexpensive at home, do it yourself solutions to problems that were previously unsolvable. So I, I wanna go back to that appointment now when you and your wife yesterday afternoon uh, walk in and you talk to the doc that's been working on her, her foot and her leg. Uh, tell about that a little bit. You one, one more time. Here comes he. Here comes Peter's courage right to the top. Say, <laughs> say say a little bit about that and what what that conversation was like. The first thing I told the doctor, she's a podiatrist, a DPM. They call them doctors of podiatric medicine, foot doctors basically. And then anyway, uh, she's a really nice lady. Uh, uh, the first thing that I told her was, Doctor, I got to tell you about ex our experience that we had that we've had in the last few days. And I told her about Diane's blood sugar and, and about the fact that, that, you know, the doctor knows all about her, all about her diabetes and everything else. And anyway, I told her about it and she couldn't believe it. And then I told her about my experience with the, with my, with my, uh, with my prostate. And th then again, she didn't believe it. And then uh, we, we took that bottle of, uh, of uh, nano silver with us because Diane wanted to spray it on her, on her, on her, on her, on her, on her surgery, she, Diane's had surgery on her heel, and it's like I said before, it's been ten months, and finally all the all the all the stitches came out a couple of weeks ago. And yesterday she took out the I think they call steri strips, and Diane wanted to spray some of this, and she said, "Well, you better not because it's not uh, it's not uh, FDA approved," and uh, I didn't know what to say to her after that. <laughs> well, that. I thought it was really neat that you told your story. Uh, you know, you bravely said, this is a huge discovery. This is what's happening to her and me. Where do you suppose um, most of the patients for a, a foot doctor are coming from? What, what, what's the affliction that leads to foot doctors needing to do work? Most of them have blood sugar problems, I'll say. Instead of diabetes, I'll just say blood sugar problems. I'm learning that I say that instead of diabetes, but. Yeah, yeah. so you told me that story and I'm, I'm filling, my, filling my truck with gas I'm, I'm uh, right next to a huge manufacturing facility in my town. And you tell me that story and it, it, it bugs me that she told you you couldn't use your silver because the FDA hadn't approved it. So uh, about, about 10 minutes later, I call you back and, and what's the topic between you and I at that point? The topic is about the sugar that the, 
that causes the people to go see her in the first place. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, is, is that FDA approved? Is it, you know, I, I looked it up before I called you. Um, 151,000 jobs in the United States tied to the sugar industry. Biggest factory, biggest employer in my town. $52 billion economic impact. Huge, dedicated, extremely effective lobbying group. FDA, not just FDA, just fine, right? It's FDA okay and subsidized. And now they're hiding the subsidy by doing it through loans. And the competition worldwide for sugar has to do with which governments are giving the best subsidies to the sugar growers. Now, I am an expert in growing sugar. I've grown a lot of sugar. I've grown a lot, driven a lot of big trucks into that factory and dumped them. And they you know, they throw away the good part and, and save the white crystalline sugar and sell it to everybody. And it leads to needing a whole bunch of podiatrists. I bet you that uh, 50, what was it? <laughs> $52 billion and 151,000 direct jobs. I bet that doesn't even include the healthcare side of that. What do you suppose the healthcare side of the sugar deal is? So I, I really backlash in my brain when somebody, you know, talks FDA about our products. Um, yeah, they're, you know, we have a great relationship. Uh, one of our products is actually a drug, the plus relief is. And so we can use some medical terms with that if we wish. But I think it's really, really uh, important to know that we're thinking differently. We're thinking better. We do truly have solutions to things that the other solutions are not good. They don't work well. They are highly expensive. They don't require a bunch of trips to doctors and surgeries and stuff. And so, um, yeah, I guess one of the things that really struck me, Peter, uh, in interacting with you this week you said you're not doing this sometime, maybe part-time as you can. Uh, you said you were doing it differently. What, what's your term about how you're doing this? I said, I'm full bore. <laughs> I said, I'm full bore. I mean, I, I know that there's a lot of people that need these products. And, and I also believe, like I told you before, that we're all here on this earth to help each other. And people need help. A lot of people need a lot of help. I mean, I've talked to a lot of people so far in, in, in the few days that I've been involved in the business. And a lot of people think they don't need it. A lot of people have told me that they're, they're already taking supplements. They're already taking this and that and everything. They don't know what I know. And uh, I think my job is to educate them. And that's what I'm trying to do, Chip. Hey, Peter, well, I think you a question. Uh, you bet. You, you, you know about this stuff. Uh, could, could you kind of tell the story of how you first met Rick, Rick Deitch and you know, because we we got a long and storied history of this product that goes back quite a ways. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? Because uh, that that journey wasn't a week ago; it was a little bit longer than that. I understand. For, for me, uh, no. Uh, what uh, Peter didn't didn't Peter know about uh, the? Product? No, Peter's. No, I I'm, that's that what I'm trying to tell you guys. Peter is brand brand new. This is all brand new. Oh, I thought those many years ago. You uh, no. Oh, cool. Yeah. No, Chip and no, I knew each other from uh, what's what, what's the magnet company? My mind went blank. What's it? The I mag think Dave knows what it is. I, I think is it Nikian? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I think that's how we how we associated with each oh, other. I, I thought it was the other company. So no, okay. No, there's a big blank in there. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. There's a giant open space between because the person who was the connector died. And so Peter and I lost track of each other. Yeah, I, th I thought you were connected to Zeolite. No, no, no. This is all this is all one week old, Dave. It's one week old. And so what I was going to say, um, Peter, when people say, "Gee, I'm already taking supplements," um, I think that's one of the questions you're going to get. And, and what are we doing together right now? We're preparing you for those conversations. Um, I've studied supplements my whole life. Dave's one of the greatest experts I ever came across. All of those are the building blocks of good health. And none of them lose value when you start in with Avini. What, what happened, though, is that there are things that keep the building blocks from fitting together right. I call them stumbling blocks. 
And the way that the cell defender works, and I know you're using all the products, so we probably shouldn't just say, you know, plus relief uh, did the whole thing because you started in with everything. It pulls the stumbling blocks out of the way. Now, all the right things you knew before start working as they should have. And that was the realization that hit me when I first met Rick Deitch. When I saw what he was doing, I thought, oh my goodness, this is the most important thing I've ever seen because everything I've looked for and I've used that disappointed me because it didn't work like it should have is going to start working like it should. And so when they raised that particular question, um, you know, I think just dive right in and say, yeah, I've been trying to be the best I could. I got into it real, real seriously when I knew I was going into special forces because I thought I got to be better than the best guy they have. And that's when I started looking for this kind of thing. And Avini is an assembly of the best things I've ever found, incredibly, and the best people. And so we are ready to go into, you know, really into the, the lion's den of, of afflictions and be helpful and be confident. And so uh, I, I picked up uh, that, that people were thinking that, you know, uh, Peter and I had been doing this all along. No, there is a true gap in between. And I'm literally learning on this call things I didn't know about him, the car wreck, the um, you know, being able to throw with both hands and all the scholarships and, and those things and, and how crucial freedom is. I mean, you, you're looking at a, at a freedom driven animal there. Actually, I think you might be looking at three of us. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. 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 Well, that's uh, some of what I wanted to do. Is anything you'd like to uh, say? What, what are your thoughts going forward? We're, we're standing. I mean, we're actually doing this right now. When you when you go out and you start a network marketing effort, Avini being probably one of the easier ones because of what we can do, it's like your lawnmower. Um, all of a sudden you go out in the morning to mow the lawn and somebody put a V8 engine on it during the night, but you walk up to it thinking, oh, that's pretty cool. But then you look closer and it still has, has a pull rope to start it with. And when you first jerk on the rope, it just goes thump like that. It barely does anything. And, and so Peter and I are pulling on that rope together now, right? Yeah. trying to get this thing started. That's right. So well, we got an adventure ahead of us. Exciting. Exactly. Exactly. We have a job to do, but we're all independent, which makes it great because uh, it's not like a job where somebody owns you and monitors everything you do. I mean, we're on our own, basically, but we do have a lot of help, which, which makes it very unique. I mean, the greatest thing about, uh, about Avini that I've seen so far is that you can talk to anybody in, any, in anybody's line and they're all willing to help you. I've never seen that in network marketing before. I've never seen where you have so many people that are so willing to, to help you and guide you and, and, and give you all the, all the advice that, 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 we need to, that we need to get. There's a lot to learn, obviously, and uh, I'm hungry for knowledge, Chip and, and Dave. You know, so. I want to learn as much as I can from you guys. Well, I gather that you're uh, definitely a personal development guy because uh, you went out on YouTube. You did a whole bunch of things there. You found Eric Worre. You found GoPro. Next, you're quoting it to me before, before which is, but I, would you just say something about some of the people you've met this week that are involved in Avini and, and your impressions of them, maybe beginning with Neil Roth and Doug Dickey and, and me, you know, Darren and Dave and, and some of the other people that you've actually gotten to talk to. Well, I have my contact list right here, right in front of me of uh, people I've talked to personally. Uh, of course, Chip and Dave and Doug Dickey and the fabulous Marcy Littlejohn and Dan Doherty, who's a um, super nice guy. We spent, by the way, D uh, Chip, Dan and I spent a lot of time together on the phone yesterday. Uh, and then he had to leave and he called me back and we spent some more time but he's got a son that lives here in Vancouver where I live in Vancouver Washington and uh, the guy is an ex-marine I didn't know of course I didn't know that and I want to meet him but uh, uh, yeah the people that I've met the people that I've talked to uh, 
I mean, I'm I'm incredibly lucky to know these people. I mean, I'm incredibly lucky. I'm incredibly lucky to know you guys. I mean, so uh, I just I just feel very very fortunate. I feel very fortunate uh, that I that I made that phone call. I think it was the best phone call I've ever made in my life, Chip. So. Well, we hope to prove that to be true. Dave, I think that's what I've got for this morning. And thank you so much, Peter, for your work this week. And as we go forward, there's two things that can happen. Peter can wind up being just happy with saving his life and his wives and extending them and giving them comfort. Um, or it can actually catch fire and it can become an Avini business beginning with Peter Sanchez. And it's certainly uh, our intent together to make that happen. And it's going to be a test of us. We're going to we're going to find out um, how we work together and how good we are. And and so no doubt when you sponsor someone, um, you've just offered them to, to help them get their business going. And and I'm just looking for every way I can to uh, to be helpful to you, Peter. And I know everybody else is, too. One of my friends, I got to tell you a real quick story before we leave. One of my best friends lives here in Vancouver and. Uh, the guy is such a giving guy. He always comes over here and mows my lawn and helps me with stuff that I can't do. And of course, he knows about Avini. And he says, Peter, he said that to me yesterday. He was here. He says, Peter, isn't that the kind of business where the people at the top make all the money and the people at the bottom don't make nothing? And I said, yeah, it sure is. The people at the bottom don't do nothing. <laughs> and, uh, he didn't know what to say after I told him that. But uh, uh, anyway, uh, I'm, I'm going to, he's already, he's already asking me a bunch of questions. I'm going to get him on the products because he needs them also. He's exactly, he's actually two months older than I am. So he needs them worse than I do. Yeah. There you go. Another conversation that started out. And so people are in gestation. Once you start the topic, then they're thinking, growing, considering you, and you're good. At, I know everybody feels like they're not good about following up, but I've noticed you're you know, you have a strong intention to follow up and, and we did a bunch of follow up calls uh, yesterday. So that that always helps, always helps. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything Great. else, Dave? Oh, Thank I would you. say just kind of thinking about possibilities and, and just listening to you. You've been in this about a week and and you've done, done a lot of studying. You've reached out, you've talked to people, you've uh, coached with other people. And I, I just say, well, a lot of people have been in this maybe a few months, uh, maybe from the beginning, and they haven't done any of that yet. And I just, uh, I think comes to mind where the question was asked, how long does it take the average person to go diamond? Answer, uh, the average person never does. And so don't, don't be average, be, be extraordinary. And, and just look at this. Uh, Chip and I were talking uh, before, and we were, we were just kind of thinking, you know, this this idea that uh, happiness is accomplishment you know that, uh, that that's what we're made to do and um I, I i just always remember this comment that uh, jim Rohn talked about that how tall does a tree grow well the answer is as, as tall as it can that human beings are pretty much the only creatures that uh don't do as much as they can because they have a choice and and they hold back but uh the greatest happiness is just doing all you can, doing doing very well and and all out. And and that was that was kind of my greatest fear uh, before things like this was that uh, I would eventually grow old and and die and still have a full tank of gas that I'd never given my all to something. And and I, I would just reach out to everyone and just think, what, what are you waiting for? Uh, uh, this would be a good time to see how fast you can run. Uh, what, when's the last time you ran as fast as you could? And wh why don't you see how fast? Uh, do all you can, and uh, you're, you're going to be really happy for that. So, yeah, you know, five years from now, uh, look back at this moment. What what what's your future self going to be thinking? Uh, uh, don't think if only I would have done something. Oh wow, this is a really big business now. I wish I would have done something. Uh, do it now. So do do the things today that your future self will be thankful that you did so yeah and, and, and if it's fun you can do lots of it <laughs> so it, it is fun for me uh, dave and chip i mean this is fun yeah it's not a job it's fun it's helping people is fun and watching people uh get get help with uh, some of their problems is fun to me it's fun to, it's fun to do that it's not a job it's not work it's uh it's, it sure be sit, sitting here watching television all day that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> it is it, it really is 
All right. Well, hey, we need you. Uh, every, every one of us, uh, we're connected to people that they might not ever hear about this if you don't talk to them. And so uh, be be uh, an, an essential link, not a missing link. So, yeah. Well, thanks, everybody. Dave, and, thank you very much for inviting me on this call. I mean, it's been an experience for me and I really appreciate it. Appreciate you, too. Love you all. Have a good one. And let's make this the best month ever. All right.